<laughs> Let's do this. Awesome. So excited. Thank you everyone for being here. God is always so good. And I know that um, we definitely want to give a uh, shout out to all the moms out there. We love every single one of you uh, who has gone through so much putting up with each and every one of us. So we thank you to all the moms that raised us and um, who just love, uh, who's just the, always been there for us. And uh, we know moms have always been a big part of our lives. So um, today I actually want to give a topic on giving birth to greatness. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's pray first. So Father God, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for all the moms out there. Lord, I just pray for abundance of blessing over all the moms out there. Um, and Lord, right now, I just pray for myself that you just anoint me and that this is this will be a word that will will release just a, a new anointing, a new fresh vision, uh, excitement for life, just finding purpose. I just pray that you will just use me and speak through me. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus name. Awesome. So I want to talk about Mary. Mary is the mother of Jesus and she has been the mother that a lot of people look up to. Um, she was the person that God chose to give birth to Jesus Christ. Wow, what kind of calling is that to be the one who's chosen for that? That is amazing. I mean, what a big calling just to have that. So let's, uh, let's read Luke 1, 26 to 38. And it says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will receive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be, and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father's David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, uh, asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And I find when God, when the angel is speaking to Mary about this, I'm feeling like he's pretty much saying, don't worry about it. I got you. Nothing is impossible because in 36, it says, even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. And she was, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Wow. Wow. So pretty much the angel is pretty much saying, don't worry about it. You're a virgin. It's okay. There's nothing impossible with God. And it's like, look at your, your cousin, look at your relative. She's an old, old age. She had a hard time bearing a child, but you know what? She's in her sixth month right now. So don't worry about it. And I, and I love Mary's response. Mary's response says, I'm the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then, then the angel left. And I think that is so powerful. She gets this news. I would probably be freaking out thinking, what is going on? I'm a virgin and I'm going to have a baby. And not only am I going to have a baby, but I'm going to have this baby that is going to rule the, rule the nations. That, that is just, this has this enormous calling. And so I want to remind you 
And I want to ask you, did you know you were created for a purpose? Did you know you were created with an unconditional, everlasting love? Did you know, did you know you were created for greatness? Every single person here is created with a purpose, with a divine calling and to greatness. And a lot of times we don't understand what that means or we don't understand that's for you, but it is for you. See, for in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. This is saying that you were created for something amazing for your life. I don't know if you're in a position where you're like, man, is there a purpose for me? Is there something great ahead for me? What, where am I at? But remember that God has created you for a divine purpose. It says for Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. And it says, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Before you were even in your mother's womb, God already knew you. He, know, he knew the destiny. He knew the plans. He, he knew the purpose for you. He knew you from the very beginning. He had a divine purpose for you. That's powerful. See, <clears throat> Many people are called with a purpose. Many people are out, are every single people, every single person is called to something big, to something great. And I want to talk about that greatness, that purpose that you're called to be. See, a lot of times it's easy to, to allow obstacles to have, um, to have things come in our life that we just feel like, man, that's not for me. There's nothing good for me. But again, I want to remind you that you were called for a purpose and you were called to greatness. And God wants to destine something big. He wants to destine and birth out something great inside of you. But in order to do that, it takes time and process. And let's talk about human biology. So let's talk about this. Human biology, when your mommy and your daddy gets together and they have a bunch of fun and what happens, and I'm not trying to be nasty, but this is human anatomy. Well, what happens when daddy gets excited? Millions of sperms begin to swim up, release into the productive tract. And each one swims through the cervix and then goes to the fallopian tombs. And as each one is still fighting and swimming its way up to that egg, the, the woman inside is still trying to kill every single uh, swimmer that's trying to creep up up there. And let me tell you, there's millions trying to reach that one egg, that one egg. And after those millions and millions of trying to reach and, and the woman is just killing each one left and right, left and right. Eventually one gets to the egg and forms into a, a baby. And then in the mother's womb for 10 months and begins to form itself. And so I wanna stop there because <clears throat> here's the thing. A lot of people forgot that you were called and destined to greatness, that you were called to be a winner. And a lot of times it's like, you have to understand and you have to go to the roots of how, when you were created, when you were created, you were competing against millions to get to that destiny, to get to that egg for you to be formed. You were created to be a winner. You, you were the one who won. You weren't there to look and follow the rest of the million that didn't make it. So if that's you and you're in a place of comparison, stop it. 
because you're not there to be like anyone else and you're not there to compare yourself to someone else. You were created for a divine purpose. You were created to do something amazing and <clears throat> you were created to be you because if you stopped and looked at every all your surrounding and started saying, I want to be like this person. I want to be like that person. Well, you know what? Maybe you want to have actually reached the egg. <clears throat> but your, your swimmer had so much fight, had so much drive that you were formed and you were created and you were created for a divine purpose. And I want to remind you that if you're in a place of comparison, if you're in a place of saying, <clears throat> man, uh, I, you know, I, I feel defeated. If you're in a place of saying, oh, man, there's nothing good for me. I want to remind you again that you are alive today because you fought through it and you landed to the destination you were supposed to be so that you could be formed on this planet, living and breathing. So that's a reminder. Don't forget that you are called to be a winner, especially you didn't fight against 10, 20, 100, hundreds, thousands. You fought against millions and you made it. Wow, that shows strength. That shows strength just right there. That shows a miracle right there. Wow, how beautiful is that? And so here's the thing. When we have, <clears throat> when a baby is formed, we have to understand that when you're formed inside your, in your mother's womb, well, it takes time and process. You know, the, the, the little round circle begins to grow and you, you get, begin to form legs and arms, a, a head. You, you, you just begin to develop. But all of that takes process. All of that takes time. And here's the thing. Even when we are called to, we're all, when we're in the process of getting ready to birth out the destiny, to get ready to birth out the, the purpose of, in our life, we all have to go through a process. And the thing is, you, you might know what your purpose is. And if you do, and you try to intervene, and you try to allow it to happen too soon, well, guess what? Sometimes when we allow things to happen too soon, just like a baby, that could cause critical condition to the child. It could, um, it could even abort the child if the child is birthed too soon, but it needs to be in the mother's womb and it needs to develop and it needs the time, it needs to process and it needs to grow. And as it does, at the perfect timing, that baby is released. Same thing, time and process. It takes time and process for something great to be released in your life. So if you're in a position where you're like, man, I'm trying to rush my purpose. I'm trying to rush things or um, things are, you know, you're, it's just, it, it takes the time where you just have to let go and sit back and say, God, I put my trust in you. I don't understand. I, I have this vision or I, I know where I want to go or I don't know where I want to go, but I'm just going to lay it down and trust you that in the time and in the process as I'm developing, as I'm growing and going through life, that I'm just going to land where I need to be. But I need to fully put my trust in you. But let time and process develop you because something great is about to happen in your life. And here's the important thing that as we're developing our time and our process, it's important <clears throat> that we allow us to have divine connections. For it says in Luke 1, 41 to 44, it says, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she ex exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you 
you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? As soon as you sound, as soon as the sound of your greetings reach my ears, the baby in my womb leap for joy. We see here that Mary and Elizabeth come together and both of their babies begin to just leap in joy, divine connection. And let's talk about that. In the entrepreneur world, they always say, there's several quotes that I always love to just hear. And one of them is, tell me who you hang around with and I will tell you who you will become. Who? Oh, right there. And here's another one from Jim Rome, oh, one of the greatest speakers of all times. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. What? The five people you most spend time with? Dang. So who are you spending your time with? Because you're the average of those. See, it's really, really important to hang out with people where you want to go, where, where what is the destiny that you want to elevate yourself to? Because who you hang out with is who you're going to become. So we see here, Mary and Elizabeth got together. And these two people were, they, they were, they lifted each other up. They pushed each other. And even Elizabeth, who was John's, who birthed out John, his purpose was to make the way for Jesus. And so that was a divine connection. And so again, who are you hanging out with? Who do you want to become? Because it's so important that who you hang out with is who you want to become. Because if we hang out with people that are out there doing drugs, who are partying all the time, well, guess what? That is your level of expectation is just to go out and party all the time. If your level of expectation is to hang out with a whole bunch of uh, millionaires, well, if you're hanging out with all these millionaires and hearing how they talk and how they think, well, then you're eventually going to be able to talk and think, and they're going to, you're going to elevate your standards to get to where they are at. So it's really, really important to who you hang out with is who you become, because also the very people that you hang out with can either help you push you forward to the destiny or destroy your destiny and make you have doubt or tell you you're not good enough and tell you that you're dreaming too big. How many people have been out there that have listened, that had a dream and had a voice or someone tell you that's not for you? You can never do that. Um, <clears throat> one of my stories that um, has been a really big impact in my life is that I used to have a best friend. Her and I, we would hang out all the time. She, she was my junior high and high school best friend. We always hung out. We, like, we were inseparable. <laughs> and uh, I remember there was another girl that came into our friendship. And um, this other uh, girl who was in our friendship, she uh, was more into like drugs and um, partying. And so I started to notice a distance with my best friend and I. And, um, and <clears throat> with that being said, um, I was never into, I mean, I never really got into like the drugs aspect. Um, and so I saw my best friend and I just, we just started to lose common interests. Uh, we started to just separate each from each other and we lost our friendship. And to this day, I'm sad to see that uh, she, she has, you know, she's, her life is not doing very well. And um, her, her stand, like, sh she's living like paycheck to paycheck. And um, it looks like sh she could possibly still be on drugs. Uh, I can definitely see her life is not where it should be. And I really feel like it's really important to be very careful who we hang out with because we don't want someone who we hang out with to prevent the future and the call of God. Because I remember when I was with her, she had dreams, she had visions of what she wanted to do. 
but when I've talked to her like maybe five or six years ago, it was like all those dreams that she once had just was gone. And it was so weird to see the transformation when she used to be so motiv motivated for life. It's very interesting. So it's really important. Who are we hanging out with in our life that's gonna uplift us, that's gonna take us to the destiny that we want? Uh, because who you hang out with is who, you gonna, who you're gonna become. And we definitely see that in Mary and Elizabeth in the Bible. It's so important to hang out with the right people. So when you surround yourself with the right people and you surround yourself with people who will elevate you, then guess what? It's time and ready to birth out greatness in your life. Greatness that is about to be released. And I want to <clears throat> read 1 Peter 2, 9. It says, but you are a chosen generation. I want to read this first because I want people to understand that not everyone believes that there's greatness in their life. And they need to be reminded that even the Bible tells you that you are called to something great. For again, it says in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wow, again, you are called. If, if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and he is the King of Kings, and he's the Lord of Lords, well, guess what? We have access to the, because we have the inheritance of that as well. And, and we are known to be, we are called to be sons and daughters of, of God. Of, so if we understand that, then, this is, we are royalty and we're like heavenly royalty, all of us. That's the standard of living we're all called to. <clears throat> but you know what? A lot of us, we don't know that. We don't understand where we're called. We don't understand the call of God. But here's the thing. You're a call to greatness. It says over and over in the Bible that you are called to do something great. For Mary, uh, Mary, she had a purpose. Her purpose was to release the son of God. Wow, that's amazing. Despite all her trials, all her tribulations, everything she had to go through, she still, she had a divine purpose. And <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you've gone through. It doesn't matter what people say. I want to remind you the roots and the call of God over your life is that you we're destined for greatness. And as I was praying, um, I was really praying for, I was like, God, speak to me about this. What do you have for your people? And I feel like <clears throat> each person has a season in their life that are that's listening to this sermon. One, I feel like the people who haven't really found purpose, they've been asking, they're like, God, I don't know what my purpose. And they're just, I feel like there's a questioning there's like this huge question, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? And I, I felt like to those people in that season, God was just saying, just ask, just ask. Um, and I feel like that God's going to give someone a dream. A, some, I, I don't know. I feel like tonight God's going to release a dream into someone and you're going to, you're going to begin to hear, find out what your purpose is. And you might ask, oh, is it really that simple? It is that simple. I remember Jen, she came and she asked me and she said, how do you hear God's voice? I said, oh, all you got to do is just ask. Just ask. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. So it's just that simple. If you want, if you're at this stage in your life, where like, God, what's your purpose? Uh, just, oh, that's all you have to do. It's really simple. And she said, she couldn't believe how simple it was. So she decided to ask. <clears throat> And then she said, well, I'm having a hard time so hearing his voice. And she just said, God, I'm having a hard time hearing your voice. Can you give me dreams? And the moment she prayed that, she started dreaming every single night. God started just speaking, speaking to her. And she came back to me and she said, oh, my God, Angela, 
I can't believe it was just that simple. All you have to do is ask and God, God answers. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. I was like, yeah, it's just that simple. He's, he's a loving God and he wants to speak to you. He wants to have a relationship with you. It's just that simple. And so I feel like the people who are out there who are saying, <clears throat> questioning, what's my purpose in my life? What am I here for? I feel like that's what God wants. He just wants you to be in a season where you just ask and say, and, and God will begin to speak to you and you'll just feel that in your spirit. And I feel like there's another season for people who are going through a process. They're going through time and process. And <clears throat> you just want something so bad. You want it to happen right now. But there is something where God is saying, I'm not going to release you right now. I'm, I cannot release you right now. Because if I do, there's going to release more chaos. And it could abort. It could abort, abort that purpose, that mission because you're not ready for it. And it's just like, let, I feel like God is saying, let, let me just work with you. Let me get you ready. Let's let, there's things I want to move and work inside of you to make you stronger, to make you more prepared, to guide you, to open more doors of opportunity before you enter into this divine purpose. And, and in that, uh, just, I feel like God is saying, just trust me, just trust me, just wait, be patient, just be patient. The third season that I feel like God is speaking to people who have been working really, really hard, that they've just been grinding and, and they, they've just been doing everything that they have been doing. And I feel like those are the people God is saying, I've seen your faithfulness and I'm ready to birth something great out of you. So get ready and get prepared. And I think each seat, as I'm talking about those three different seasons, I feel like you're going to know what season that you're called to because you'll feel it. You'll feel that like leap. You'll feel that joy. You'll feel that in your spirit, like, ah, this is a season that that's meant for me. This is what I need to work on. And, and I feel like that's a release that God is about to release into your life. And so Every eye closed, every head bowed. And um, I'm going to end with this, that um, if first of all, for everyone here or anyone on our online, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want to remind you that he created you and he loves you with an unconditional love. And he created you with a divine purpose, with greatness in your life. You see it throughout the Bible over and over again. And you know, the thing is, God doesn't have any favor over anyone. He loves everyone equally. But are you willing to love him back? Because his arms are wide open and he's ready. He's ready to say, to just to have his arms and say, you know what? I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. And if that's you, and maybe you either haven't accepted Jesus Christ in your life, or maybe there's something in your heart that you just fell away and you're like, I need to come back. I need to come back. I feel this tug and I feel this unconditional love. Say this prayer after me. Father God, thank you so much for dying on the cross for my sins. I declare heaven is my home and God is my father in Jesus name. And every person out there that's going through a season, a season, one of those seasons where it's whether trying to understand what your purpose is, maybe a season of time and patience, waiting for God to say, okay, I'm ready for you to work on me. Help me, give me the, the, the patience so I know the right timing to be released. Or maybe it's a time where you just feel like, ah, oh, I got it. God's ready to birth something big out. I want to pray for every person in the, in, that's going through a season. Father God, I just thank you so much that you love every single person here unconditionally. And I pray that whatever season each individual is going through, that you will pour out <clears throat> your, you will pour out strength, that you will pour out the spirit of God, that the floodgates of heaven will open over each individual, that, that you will just um, stir something so big and so powerful inside of them that when they go through each season that you're that when the time is right that 
they will walk and birth out their purpose, the great destiny. And Lord, I pray that every person out there who's struggling with understanding their purpose and that joy will come into their hearts because something big is about to happen. I thank you so much that you're gonna release and birth out greatness that's gonna come out of us. We thank you so much in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome, thank you guys. It was so wonderful. Thank you everyone who has been here and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, love you all, take care, bye. Thank you.